Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our final chapter of Wagon Wheels. I think we have someone here to help introduce this morning. Hi, guys. I'm Puppy Face. Well, okay, I'm Saban. You got me. So, we're doing chapter three. And, no, chapter four on Wagon Wheels. And it's the last chapter. And it's called the letter, but here's the twelfth day. Let's just kick this one time. Quick. Ah. All right. So yeah. Game on. Chapter four, the letter. Should have had that ready. Here we go, team. Chapter four, the letter. April went by. Then May and June. We hunted and fished and wa waited for a letter from Daddy. Nothing came. Then in July, the post rider came with a letter for us. Post rider would be what we would call today like our mailman. It said, Dear boys, I have found fine free land near Solomon City. There is wood here to build a house, and good black dirt for growing corn and beans. There is a map with this letter. The map shows where I am and where you are. Follow the map. Stay close to the Solomon River until you come to the deer trail. You will find me. I know you can do it, because you are my fine big boys. Love to all, Daddy. I thought there were three boys. Who's reading that letter? The oldest one, probably. We started out the next day. We piled cornbread and blankets into Little Brother's wagon until there was no room for Little Brother. Can you walk like a big boy, I asked him. He nodded. All of Nicodemus came out to say goodbye. The Hills, the Hickmans, the Saddlers. They said, poor babies, going 150 miles all by themselves. But we knew we could do it. Our daddy had told us so. It's probably Mr. Hickman who was reading the letter with those boys. We went to the river and we followed the map. We walked all day. When little brother got tired, I carried him. At night we stopped and made a fire. I told Willie, we will take turns. First, I will watch the fire and you sleep. Fire the gun sometimes. It will scare wild animals away. There were plenty of wild animals on the prairie. Wolves, panthers, coyotes. Each night our fire and the sound of the gun kept them away. Cool. Yeah. But one night I heard Willie call to me. Johnny, wake up, but don't move. I opened my eyes. There on the ground next to me was a big, prairie rattlesnake. It was warming itself by the fire. I didn't move. I didn't breathe for fear it would bite me. What shall we do? Willie whispered. I tried to think what daddy would do. Then I remembered daddy once told me that snakes like warm places. I said to Willie, let the fire go out. It seemed like hours we were there, Wiley, little brother, and me, staying so still. At last the fire went out, the night air got chilly, the snake moved away into the darkness. Well, yeah, he liked the warmth, so when the warmth was gone, he went away. For 22 days we followed the river, then one day we came to a deer trail it led away from the river, just like on the map. This way, I told my brothers. So they're following the map their father made. And he just, he just drew it? Yep. How do you, what did he use to draw? I don't know. Paper and a pencil. We walked along the trail. It led up a hill. On the side of the hill, we saw a little house with a garden in front. We could see corn growing. 
A man came out of the house. When he saw us, he began to run toward us. He was a bad. Daddy, Willie, Johnny, little brother. There was, then there was such hugging and kissing and talking and crying and laughing and singing that I bet they heard us all the way back in Nicodemus. Place called Solomon, Solomon City. Ooh, two different names from the Bible. Yeah, and old Mrs. Sadler must have said, "Sounds like the Moldy Boys have found their daddy." And they did. Behind the story, Wagon Wheels is based on a true story. In 1878, Ed Moldy and his family left Kentucky to go to Kansas. They had heard about the Homestead Act, which promised free land to anyone who was willing to settle the West. The Muldies were among the thousands of black pioneers who left the South after the Civil War. Many of them, like the Muldies, settled in Kansas. The town of Nicodemus, which was named for a famous slave, was a black community. Yeah. The, yep. The three boys in this story really did stay alone in a dugout. And they did travel 150 miles by themselves to find their father. The incident with the Osage Indians actually happened in the Nicodemus colony, and prairie fires were common in the whole Kansas Territory. The Maldi Boys story is documented in the memoirs of the late Lulu Sadler Craig, who came to Nicodemus as a child and spent much of her life teaching school and collecting information on the town's history. The material on which this book is based was used through a special arrangement with Craig Lively and the other members of Mrs. Craig's family. Is that the person who made the comment here? Old Mrs. Sadler. Okay, that might have been Mrs. Sadler. But She's in the real sad, life is Mrs. Um, well, no, it says late Lulu Sadler Craig. Ha! Huh. Stop. All right, everybody. Have a great day, and God bless you all. Oh la la.